and gentlemen, thank you for standing by, and welcome to the Great Southern Bank Corp. Fourth Quarter 2020 Earnings Call. At this time, all participants' lines are in a listen-only mode. After the speaker's presentation, there will be a question and answer session. To ask a question during that session, you'll need to press star 1 on your telephone. If you require any further assistance, please press star 0. I will now like to hand the conference over to your speaker today, Ms. Kelly Polonis. Please go ahead, ma'am. Thank you, Catherine. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for our fourth quarter earnings call. This is Kelly Polonis, Investor Relations for Great Southern Bank Corps, Inc. The purpose of this call is to discuss the company's results for the quarter ending December 31st, 2020. Before we begin, I need to remind you that in this call, we may make forward-looking statements about future events and financial performance. These statements are subject to a number of factors that could cause actual results to differ materially, materially from the anticipated results. For a list of some of these factors, please see our current earnings release and other public filings. President and CEO Joe Turner and Chief Financial Officer Rex Copeland are on the call with me. I'll now turn the call over to Joe Turner. All right. Thanks, Kelly, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we appreciate you joining us today. I'm pleased to report that 2020 ended with strong operating results for us in the fourth quarter. Our performance underscores our associates' dedication and tireless efforts in taking care of our customers during this unprecedented time. I'm really proud of our team. I'll provide some brief remarks about our company's performance during the quarter and then turn it in, turn the call over to Rex Copeland, our CFO, who will go into more detail on the financial results, and then we'll open it up for questions. For the fourth quarter, uh, we earned $17.8 million, or $1.28 per share, uh, compared to $17.9 million, or $1.24 per share in the same period a year ago. The uh, earnings per share increase reflect, reflects the company's uh, common stock repurchases during the year. Uh, we uh, purchased approximately 530,000 shares of common stock during the year at an average price of $41.71. The primary drivers of our slight earnings decline for the year, from the year ago period were higher loan loss provisions, slightly lower net interest income, uh, higher non-interest expense, mainly as a result of, uh, um, you know, $828,000 of uh, foreclosed real estate write-downs, as well as higher compensation expense, uh, mainly in the mortgage area. Our performance metrics during the quarter were annualized return on common equity, 11.27%, annualized return on assets, 1.31%, our margin was 3.41%, and our efficiency ratio was about 56.7%. Our loan production in 2020 was pretty strong considering the operating climate. We surpassed $1.2 billion in commercial loan originations, uh, and with historically, high, with historically low mortgage rates, uh, we produced a record-setting $540 million of uh, single-family mortgage loans. Our total gross loans, which included unfunded loan uh, amounts, increased $202 million from the end of 2019, uh, but decreased $27.6 million during the fourth quarter. From the end of 2019, outstanding loan balances uh, increased $143 million, including about $96 million of Paycheck Protection Program loans that were left on our books uh, at the end of 2020. Uh, during the fourth quarter, our loan balances decreased by about $117 million uh, because of payoffs. About $26 million of those payoffs uh, were PPP loans. Our pipeline of loan commitments can, continue, continues to be strong. Uh, that's shown in our, our pipeline chart is shown in our press release, and if you look at it, you can see that it's really been pretty steady since I think December of 2018 is the first period in that, uh, in that pipeline report, and, and our pipeline has been fairly steady. On January 19, we began accepting PPP applications from our small business customers. Uh, during the first PPP cycle, we uh, did about 1,600 loans, $121 million. Um, I also want to point out to you that for more information about our loan portfolio, uh, we did post our 
uh, quarterly loan portfolio presentation, I believe, yesterday. Our asset quality is at historically strong levels. Uh, at 12-31-2020, uh, non-performing assets were $3.8 million. Uh, I think seven basis points, maybe, uh, of loans. Total net charge-offs were $422,000 during the year. I think that's about one basis point, and, and that was primarily or really exclusively in our, in our uh, to the extent it related to loans, it was in our indirect portfolio. I think the rest of our, pretty much the rest of our loan portfolios had net recoveries during the year. Um, so, so very strong credit quality. Uh, as far as loan mo modifications, our total loan modifications were down to uh, $251 million at the uh, end of the year, and we do expect those to continue to trend down uh, uh, during 2021. Uh, our capital remains very, very strong. Uh, uh, total equity to total assets of 11.4 percent. Uh, common equity to tangible assets, tangible common equity to tangible assets at 11.3 percent. So strong levels of capital uh, give us lots of flexibility going forward. As I mentioned, we did purchase about 530,000 shares of common stock in 2020, 140,000 uh, shares of that was purchased during the fourth quarter um, at a little higher price, than, obviously, than the, uh, than the uh, full year average price. That concludes my prepared remarks. I'll turn the call over to uh, Rex Copeland at this time. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Uh, I want to start off today with a brief discussion about our adoption of Cecil. Uh, as you all know, uh, there was legislation at the, at the end of 2020 that uh, enacted a lot of things, but one of the things that was part of it was the, the uh, optional additional deferral period for uh, CECL implementation. Uh, we elected to initially adopt this in uh, January of 2021, so the fourth quarter information is still uh, prepared and, and the full year of 2020 is prepared under the incurred loss methodology uh, beginning here in the first quarter of 2021. Uh, we will uh, adopt the CECL methodology and so going forward be under that. So uh, what that will look like is we will have um, a cumulative adjustment that will happen uh, at, the, at the beginning of this year. We'll add uh, or increase our allowance for credit losses. There will also be an allowance for potential losses that relate to the unfunded portion of our loans and commitments. Uh, and, and the net of that is all going to flow through uh, our retained earnings. And so uh, we think that, that the balance of uh, the allowance will increase on the outstanding loan portion about 10 to $13 million. Uh, for the unfunded portion, it will be about 7 to $8 million. And then the after-tax effect of that that will flow through retained earnings is a decrease in retained earnings of about 13 to $15 million upon implementation. Uh, so the initial adoption should have no impact on the income statement. The uh, next area I want to touch on is the net interest income and margin. So our net interest income for the fourth quarter of 2020 decreased about $365,000 to uh, $44.6 million compared to $44.9 million uh, for the fourth quarter of 2019. Uh, net interest income was affected by the Federal Reserve's interest rate cuts in March um, and also additional you know, lower yielding um, earning assets like the PPP loans, uh, investment securities, and increased uh, funds in cash equivalents at the Federal Reserve Bank. Um, also interest expense related to the subordinated debt that we uh, issued in June of 2020. So the net interest margin as a percentage in the fourth quarter was 3.41% versus 3.82 percent in the fourth quarter of 2019 and uh, also versus 3.36 percent in the third quarter of 2020. So if we compare the, the, fourth, the two fourth quarter periods, um, the average yield on loans decreased about 82 basis points while the average rate on deposits declined about 77 basis points uh, quarter versus quarter year over year. Um, so most of the margin compression actually resulted from changes in the asset mix. Uh, with average cash equivalents increasing about $212 million and average investment securities increasing about $63 million. Uh, the average yield on cash equivalents decreased 153 basis points between 
the fourth quarter 2019 and the fourth quarter 2020. So the change in asset mix accounts for about 16 basis points of the decrease with the additional subordinated notes issued in June 2020 accounting for another eight basis points. And then in addition to that, <clears throat> the yield accretion on our FDIC acquired loan portfolio was about 12 basis points less in the fourth quarter 2020 versus fourth quarter 2019. So uh, the core net interest margin when you, when you exclude the additional yield accretion on the acquired loan pools was 3.34% in the fourth quarter of 2020, and that compared to 3.63% in the fourth quarter of 2019, and 3.27% for the third quarter of 2020. The, uh, the core net interest margin increase, you know, compared to the third quarter of 2020 was primarily related to uh, lower deposit costs between those two uh, three-month periods. The, to speak a little bit more about deposit costs, so during the three months ended December 31, 2020, our cost of interest-bearing deposits was 15 basis points lower than it was in the three months ended September 30, 2020, and it was 77 basis points lower than it was during the three months ended December 31st, 2019. Uh, we expect that we'll make further progress, uh, albeit maybe not quite as dramatic, uh, in, the, in reducing interest rates on our deposits throughout the first half at least and maybe beyond in, in 2021. So uh, I mentioned earlier the uh, impact of the accretion income for FDIC uh, acquired loans. Uh, we've you know, obviously had that accretion income for, for many, many years now. In the fourth quarter of 2020, the impact on that was a, a positive seven basis points uh, to our margin. Uh, and the remaining um, accretable yield that will affect income in future periods is about $2 million. And we expect to recognize about one and a half million of that in the uh, full year of 2021. Non-interest income, I'll speak about for just a moment here, uh, it increased when you compare the fourth quarter this, this year versus fourth quarter of 19, non-interest income increased 2.3 million to, to $10 million. Um, the two main areas that, that uh, fed into that were net gains on, on loan sales. So we um, originated, as Joe said earlier, we originated a lot of residential loans. Many of them or most of them are fixed rate, which we typically sell in the secondary market. Uh, so our profit on loan sales increased about $1.8 million in the fourth quarter of 2020 versus fourth quarter of 2019. Also in other income, that increased about $404,000 compared to the previous year quarter. Um, that related to um, a little bit better uh, performance, uh, some sales of fixed assets. We had some, some gains this, this year versus uh, some expense or, or loss in the fourth quarter of 2019. We also recognized a little more income, about 76,000 more in income on interest rate swaps with our customers. So these are just individual swaps with individual, on individual loans with our, with our loan customers. And then we also had an increase of about 58,000 of income uh, compared to the previous year quarter that related to you know, scheduled payments and exit fees and things related to our uh, tax credit partnership activities. Non-interest expense for the quarter increased about $1.6 million to $31.1 million when comparing it to the fourth quarter of 2019. The major areas where we had increases were in salary and employee benefits. Uh, that was up $782,000 from the prior year quarter. That was uh, a lot of, that would have to do with merit increases and just normal um, increases that happen uh, from, from year to year. Uh, we also had increased incentives in the mortgage division, which the uh, costs there were about $220,000 more than they were in the uh, in the previous quarter or previous year quarter. Uh, and as I mentioned, we had you know significantly more income related to the profit on those loan sales. Uh, insurance costs we in increased those costs about $389,000 compared to the prior year quarter. That increase was related to our FDIC. Uh, insurance premiums. Uh, in the previous year, we had some credits um, that were, were available to us because of over overfunding of the, of the uh, insurance fund. And uh, so we, we exhausted those credits, and then in the fourth quarter this year, we were paying the full amount. 
uh, expense on other real estate owned and repossessions, that was higher by about $535,000 compared to the prior year quarter, uh, mainly due to some write downs that we had in, in the 2020 uh, period. We had small write downs in 2019, larger ones in, in 2020. We had three foreclosed real estate properties that we took some write downs on, one of which was actually sold uh, in, in the fourth quarter in December. Uh, the other two remain. Uh, and then we also had some former bank properties, about six of those, where we wrote down some values on, on those a little bit more. So uh, in total, it was about $839,000. Our efficiency ratio for the fourth quarter 2020 was 56.98%, and that compared to 56.11% in the fourth quarter of 2019. Uh, the higher efficiency ratio uh, this year was, a, was mainly attributable to non-interest expense increases, uh, partially offset by some increase in, in total revenue. Uh, and, but despite those increases, uh, we were able to maintain or, or actually reduce the net interest expense to average assets ratio uh, down to 2.29% from 2.38% in the previous year quarter. <clears throat> that concludes the uh, prepared remarks I have. So at this time, uh, we'll turn it back over and entertain any questions you all may have. Thank you. As a reminder, to ask a question, you'll need to press star 1 on your telephone. To withdraw your question, press the pound key. And our first question comes from Michael Savani with KBW. Your line is open. Hi, good afternoon. Hello. Um, so my first question, do you, I was wondering, do you guys have any target capital levels you are aiming for, and can you provide an update on your deployment priorities in 2021? Uh, you know, I don't think we necessarily have a target capital level. Um, I would tell you we think we have um, we have plenty of capital. Um, you know, I think our you know um, highest priority would always be uh, to utilize capital to uh, organically grow, and and so you know I think we have plenty of capital. You know, even assuming, you know, really outsized growth rates, we have plenty of capital to handle that. You know, from there, um, we could use, we'll be able to use the capital opportunistically, uh, either through, um, you know, if, if there were an acquisition that came along uh, that made sense, we could utilize it there. More likely uh, would be repurchases of our stock, um, you know, a, assuming they're at, uh, our stock uh, continues to be at attractive levels. And then, you know, a third uh, use would be uh, special dividends, as we've done a couple of times. Okay, thanks. Um, and then on fee income, do you feel uh, service charges kind of normalize a bit um, from the pandemic lows? And um, do, you, do you expect that to continue? And um, And then, can you also just provide an update on the uh, mortgage banking pipelines and how you expect that strength, to, if you expect that strength to continue? Rex, why don't you yeah. answer? Um, so the the service charges and things like that, yes, they they did normalize. So we kind of um, you know anticipate those will be similar. Um, but what we may find here in the first quarter is with another round of stimulus checks and things of that nature, uh, you know, overdraft. Uh, and, and some other charges, uh, NSF charges, some service fees may may go back down again a little bit. Uh, unclear, you know, just yet what that's going to look like, but that's a possibility because we saw that when the first stimulus checks went around. Um, I think, you know, point of sale transactions and things of that nature, fees that we generate from that um, have, have stabilized and, and, you know, seem to be, as in, in the fourth quarter, seem to be sort of normal. Um, and we, I would anticipate that that should continue. Um, and so I think, you know, those areas of, of fee income should should be, um, you know, reasonable. Um, the other thing I think you mentioned was our, you know, income perhaps on the, the mortgage loan pipeline and that kind of thing. Um, you know, I, I, I don't have a, an exact number on that or anything, but I would just think that probably – um, the interest rates have ticked up a little, not a lot, but mortgage rates have maybe ticked up some. Uh, and so also 
a lot of people that could refinance have probably already done so. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know that we'll maybe quite see the same level of activity and maybe consequently profit on loan sales um, as we saw in the fourth quarter. But, um, you know, I think it will still be fairly brisk. Okay, thanks. And then just my last question, I was wondering if you could provide a little color on that, the uh, Bank of the Future prototype you guys are working on and um, how many of those you expect to roll out over the years. Um, I think we're going to I think we're going to build one or we have one uh, banking center under construction. I mean, we're going to be uh, modest in our rollout of that. You know, I think I think we're going to go with this, uh, work out the kinks. Once we have a, a plan, then you know, I would think maybe four or five a year after that, something like that. Okay, thank you. Thanks for taking my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Andrew Leish with Piper Sandler. Your line is open. Hey, everyone. Good afternoon. Hey, Andrew. Um, just on the, the PPP, uh, the, the latest round here said you're, you're participating. Uh, any early indications on uh, number of applications or, or volume, uh, dollar amount, what you're seeing so far? Um, you know, I – We've got the numbers. I mean, I think overall, Andrew, we would expect it would not be our, our totals would not be as, as significant as uh, you know the, the the first round. You know, as a reminder, we did about 120 million in the first round. I think so far we've received about 27 million dollars of applications, um, and you know about uh, maybe. 11 or 12 percent of those are uh, first draw requests. In other words, you know, customers that didn't participate back in the spring, and then the rest are um, customers that did participate in the in the spring. Um, okay. So, you know, I think I think there's there's obviously some interest, but but right now, I think we would say, yeah, it's probably not going to be at the level that it was in the spring. Got it. Okay. Um, and then, you know, just looking, it looks like it's some pretty good deposit growth here in the quarter. Uh, in, uh, interest earning cash was pretty high at, at, at year end. What, what trend are you seeing there? Has, has any of that flown off the balance sheet, or is, is that going to be just held in cash? Or, or I'm just trying to get a sense of where li liquidity is going to shake out here early in the quarter. Yeah, we, we've, we've had a lot of growth throughout the entire year, but then we had a, another kind of big uh, uh, influx of it right at the end of December. So when, and I didn't mention this earlier, but uh, I'll take the opportunity now. So if you looked at our earnings release and you looked at the, the average balance and average rate table, the, the point in time at December 31st, that first column um, in uh, that table is, is a 3.08% a Interest, net interest rate spread. Um, that, you know, it was kind of negatively impacted right at the end of the of the year by, uh, you know, fairly significant influx of, of funds that we had to park in the, um, you know, Fed as cash equivalents because we didn't have anything to do, we couldn't do anything with it at the moment. So, um, we've seen some of those deposits roll out of here, but I would say not a ton of it um, at all. Uh, and so we've been. Um, you know, utilizing different things that we have. We had a couple, we've got a, a brokered deposit and some other things like that, some national deposits that we've kind of turned the faucet off on a little bit and they're maturing and rolling out. So we're eating into that a little bit with, with some of our, um, you know, maturing deposits and that, of that nature. But the, 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 the DDA or the non-time balances are, are, you know, staying pretty sticky uh, with us. And so we're continuing to see um, pretty high levels there. But we are, you know, kind of eating into that excess funds at the Fed, um, you know, kind of as we go through the next, you know, month or two. Got it. Okay. Um, so just kind of kind of weighing that, maybe liquidity be a little bit higher, but you're also uh, have some higher cost funds that you're maybe not renewing or letting roll away, but maybe the uh, overall the funding benefits not what it was here in the fourth quarter, but then maybe get another good quarter of PVP recognition. Um, 
Are you guys folding this all together? Maybe a little bit higher margin on a reported basis here in the first quarter before trending lower? Uh, is that a reasonable way to think about it? Well, the things that are, I mean, the things that are going to happen that we kind of know about is we would anticipate that whatever uh, time deposit maturities that we're going to have uh, in the first quarter, you know, are going to be replaced or either not be replaced or be replaced at uh, much lower rates uh, than, than what they're at today. Uh, and so we'll continue to see some benefit from that. The non-time deposits, uh, which are a significant balance, um, you know, we've seen those balances move, or I'm sorry, the rates move down, um, you know, maybe a basis point or two a month on average, something like that. And so we, we anticipate we'll continue to try to work those rates down a little bit more, but it'll be, you know, incremental basis points. You know, it's not going to be big, big changes. Um, are, so are you saying, Andrew, probably you're seeing a uh, margin decline because the, uh, the uh, well, the uh, uh, hammered by fee on the uh, PPP loan will go away. Well, I'm just thinking it'll be higher here this quarter, and then as time goes on, that will that will drift away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it was about a million dollars in the yeah. in the, uh, um, fourth quarter. So that annualizes to about four million dollars. So that's really just getting us about a four percent yield on those PPP loans. I guess we're 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 also earning about one percent, so so maybe it's five. So that 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 um, you know that it's not a huge money making proposition. It's not a big yield portfolio, even with the amortized fee. So you know as that portfolio uh, rolls off, if we're able to replace it with you know other loans, you know they typically wouldn't be um, you know probably. In the four to five percent range, but they're going to be, you know, three and a half to four um, would be the replacement. You're probably closer to three and a half, three and a half to three seventy-five. So, you know, there's not a big difference between the yield on PPP loans and the yield on other loans we're making. Got it. Okay. Uh, yeah, that that's really helpful. Thanks for taking my questions. Thank you. Our next question comes from John Rodas with Danny. Your line is open. Good afternoon, guys. Hey, John. Hi, John. Um, you know, I, I, I guess Joe or Rex, maybe could could you provide any more color on the the loans that are still under deferral? I guess specifically, maybe the hotel, motel, and then the retail portfolio. You know, those are your two biggest bug, buckets. You said you you know you you expect continued improvement, but is that a quarter, or do you think that plays out throughout the year? Uh, no, I think I think it will happen sort of rateably throughout the year on the on the rest of those. And and John, I mean, I think probably, um, you know, pro probably my first comment would be, I mean, we don't look at those loans if if we thought there was uh, impaired credit on those loans, you would see those loans classified. Um, we don't see, you know, obviously with our levels of classification, um, whatever it was, $8 million or whatever total classification, none of those loans really are classified. Uh, so we don't see impaired credit. You know, we're just continuing to work with our customers. Generally, they're paying interest only. They're just not uh, making a principal payment. Um, so that would be my first comment. And, you know, we'll continue to work with people. Uh, in in some cases, certainly we've we've um, you know in exchange for continued interest only payments, maybe they uh, pledged additional collateral or 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 put cash up. Um, so you know there there's there's been a, an ongoing negotiation, and our customers have shown good faith. So you know, but um, you know they they still remain in this table. You know, our current expectation is that is that. You'll see the total, the $250 million total, sort of rateably decline throughout the year. Um, that's what we would expect. Okay, that's that's helpful, Joe. Thank you, um, Joe. Just on the on the, if you look at loan growth for the for the year, excluding PPP loans, were up about one and a half percent. Do you, uh, do, you, do, you, do you think as you look to this to 21, do you think you, you know, do you think you can do better than that one and a half percent? 
or you know, how, how are you sort of feeling about core loan growth excluding PPP? Um, you know, it's just so hard. It's so hard to tell. I mean, there's there's just parts of it that we don't have a great deal of visibility about. You know, the um, I think our origination uh, looks good. You know, there there will be points in the year when you know it slows down and speeds up, and you know, but you but you kind of look at that. Uh, our 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 uh, our uh, pipeline totals. You know, they've been as I, as I said, fairly consistent for. Um, four or five years, so you know, or three years. So you know, I I feel pretty good about that. We just don't know what um, you know the competition is going to be doing, and and I do know this. I, I, I you know we have and have intentionally uh, put ourselves in a position where we have a very strong loan portfolio. We have a loan portfolio uh, that's attractive to uh, lots of long-term lenders who are willing to. Uh, loan our customers money at, at, at rates less than what we are uh, what we have them on the books for and, and uh, limit or eliminate guarantees you know do lots of things so um, we've got an attractive portfolio uh, which I think is a good thing um, but it, it does make it tougher um, to, to keep our loan balances up so I mean I think that's a long-winded way of saying you know, we're going to continue doing what we're doing, John, and just let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. And as far as the specifically the indirect portfolio, most of that runoff has occurred, correct? Or do you expect yeah, to? Yeah, I you know, think the Bruce portfolio is like $48 million now. Right. Yeah. Okay. Guys, just one final question. The the buyback, what, what's currently remaining under the buyback? Oh, we just uh, approved a new one. Yeah, we just approved a new million share buyback, John. So I mean, there's probably nine hundred plus yeah. thousand shares left on it, something like that, maybe around nine hundred. Okay. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thanks, John. Thank you. And there are no other questions in the queue. I'd like to turn the call back to Mr. Joe Turner for closing remarks. Okay. Well, we appreciate everybody uh, being on the call with us today, and and. Uh, We'll look forward to uh, talking to you in April uh, after our first quarter earnings release. If you have questions in the meantime, uh, please don't hesitate to give uh, Kelly Polonis a call. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's conference call. Thank you for participating. You may now disconnect, everyone. Have a great day.